Hello friends, this is 14th part of microservice tutorial. In this video, we are going to talk about a Spring Cloud Config Client. In previous videos, we've seen how to implement a Spring Cloud Config Server. And in video number 12, we've seen a Spring Cloud Sleuth Zipkin. In video 11th, we added a Spring Cloud Sleuth for the logging purpose. And in video number 10, we implemented Circuit Breaker using Resilience 4J. Now, before moving forward, a small request from my side is, if this tutorial is helpful for you, then please like and share this video and subscribe the channel. In last video, we implemented git backed Spring Cloud Config Server and we added a student service configuration file for default development and production environment. In this video, we are going to add a Spring Cloud Config Client to our microservices. So I will add that in student microservice, which we have already created in video number third of this tutorial. Now let's go to STS and here is our project structure. This is config server, which we created in last video. This is course microservice. This is Eureka server. This is gateway. And this one is a student microservice. So now I'm going to add config client dependency to the student microservice. So let's go to pom.xml and here in dependency, I will add this line. So the dependency is a Spring Cloud Starter Config. Once we add this dependency, then this particular application will start behaving like Spring Cloud Config Client. Now, since we are using a Spring Cloud Config Server to maintain the configuration file, then we need to tell the student microservice that we have to fetch the configuration files from config server. To do so, we have to add config server address to the application.yml file of a student microservice. So here to add the address of config server, we need to add these property files. A spring config import and here it is optional colon config server and this is the address URL where our config server is running. This is the new change made by Spring team after Spring version 2.4. Before Spring version 2.4, to access the Spring Cloud server, we were adding this property file, spring.cloud.config.uri, and then the location of a Spring Cloud config server. But now we don't have to use this one since I'm using a Spring 2.4. After we run this project, these properties will be coming from a Spring Cloud Config Server instead of our local configuration file, which we were using before. And for the illustration purpose, I'm going to add one more method in our controller. So I have added a new endpoint slash message, which is calling this get message method and returning the message variable, which is coming from add the rate value property file. So add the rate value will look for the key message in the student service configuration file which will be coming from the Spring Cloud Config Server. Now let's go to main method class. And here you see we were using this student properties file from this particular location. Now I'm going to comment these lines because now we are not going to use this as we are going to access a student service properties file from config server. And this was the Git repository where we added a student service configuration file for default dev and prod environment. One important thing you need to be careful that each microservice fetches its configuration file with the help of application name of that microservice. So you see the application name for a student microservice is a student service. So it will fetch the configuration file with the name of a student hyphen service and then hyphen profile name. So to run the application for any particular profiles we have to add profiles active prod. If you don't add this profile property, then by default it runs on default property. And then it will fetch the configuration file with the name of a student hyphen service hyphen prod dot yml or dot properties. So now let's start our config server and student microservice. So first I'm starting config server and before starting a student microservice, I have to start the Eureka because the student microservice is gonna register itself on the Eureka server. So now config server and student microservice is running. Now let's go to Postman. So here, this is the port of a Spring Cloud config server, which we have already seen in previous video. We can access configuration file for microservices using their application name 
and profile from the config server as well. So let's hit this one. So here is the default profile configuration file. Let's do it for dev. And here we got for the dev profile. Now let's go to the student microservice URL. And here I'm going to call endpoint slash student slash message, which we have already created here. Now let's hit this one. Here we got the response and response says message from a student service from production environment. So the value of message is returning from the production environment profile. Why? Because we are running our student microservice in the production profile. Now let's change the profiles to dev, save it and restart student microservice. Now student microservice is started on port 8080. Again, let's go to the postman and hit the same endpoint. And here we got the message from the development environment. Here we seen that if we want configuration file for different different environment, so for that particular environment, we have to add separate files. But we can do all this profile based searching in a single file as well. So for that example, I'm going to add configuration file for the course microservice. And here it is. Let's go to the content. So here above hash triple dash everything will be common for all the profiles but but any key value property after profile will be only for that particular profile like for example after this has triple dash we are saying spring.config.activate.on profile equal dev and then we are writing message equal development profile message from course service that means this message property will be executed when we run course microservice in dev profile. Now after this, we added again has triple dash. So again, after this, anything will be related to the profiles, whatever we are writing after this. So here we are saying to activate profile for the production. So this message will be printed when we run our course microservice for the prod profile. Now to test this, I have added spring cloud config dependency in the pom.xml of course micro service and I have added slash message endpoint so it will be called by slash course slash message and here it is returning the value which is coming from the course service configuration file and in application.yml I have added the config server URL and here I have set profile dev so now let's run this course microservice Okay, so course microservice is running on 8081. Let's go to postman and hit the course microservice endpoint slash course slash message. Let's hit and here we are seeing the response development profile message from course service and again restart course microservice. So after restarting, if we hit this endpoint again, we are getting the response production profile message from course service. That means we are getting the properties values based on our profile set to prod. So here we can see that how we can manage all profile dependent properties in a single file instead of creating multiple properties file. So till now we implemented config server using spring cloud config server and we added a spring cloud config client to our student and micro service. And we seen that we are successfully able to access all the properties values from the configuration file using a spring cloud config. But still there is a problem that if we are going to update or change the configuration file, then we have to restart our microservices to reload those values. But this will then not fulfill the purpose of what we were expecting. We wanted something that even if we are changing the configuration file in between, we don't need to restart our services. So to achieve that goal, we will be adding a Spring Boot actuator refresh scope feature to fulfill this requirement that we will implement in next video. That's all guys for this video. If this video is useful for you, then please like and share this video and subscribe the channel. Thanks.